So do you do the peep show? <laughs> Not that kind of peep show. Uh, like like a voyeur, like like sneaking. I think we all do. Like anglers. So you ever find yourself at the boat ramp and you're sitting in your boat and some other dude had dropped in and his boat's like sitting over there and you're kind of like, what you got tied on over there? What what kind of lures you throwing out there on the lake? I see what you got. So we all do that because we, we all want more information. We all want to know, understand what other people are doing so we can make better decisions and kind of like, I think group thinks a bad word for it, but we want to understand how other people are approaching the same situation that we are and it'll inform us a little as to what we can do to kind of improve what we're doing. So I got the boat right here. I just got back from a day on the lake on Lake Gunnersville, caught some fish, had a blast. We are in the midst of kind of mid spring, late spring, going into summer a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is literally, you guys have asked me a bunch of times to show me, show you my rod setups, what I have rigged up, like literally like what I have tied on to go out to the lake, like 100%. Like literally this is the stuff I have tied on for this time of year, this season of fishing. So I'm gonna run through it. This is gonna be setups line lures and a little bit of sleeping bog <laughs> stay tuned bog you made the video you made the video so let's start with the reaction stuff because that's always a little bit more fun so mixed up a little bit I consider this reaction, this is actually a flipping like setup. This is um, basically it's a 3 8 ounce Hogtech Tungsten. Um, I got an ugly outer on here, but I'll have any kind of creature bait. And then I do have a wide gap plus hook. It's an owner wide gap plus. I got this on 30 or 40 pound braid. I can't quite remember. Seven foot six. It's, it's a s almost heavy rod. It's like medium extra heavy. It's a weird halo rod. It's one of the TIs, but it's like, it's rated a little bit heavier. But what am I gonna do with this? So there's this stuff called primrose. It's basically kind of like a viney grass up here on Gunnersville. I'll pitch this into that grass. I'll also pitch this if the water's a little bit stained and I can like get under the docks or something like that. Basically it's an all purpose, shallow water, slightly lighter pitching rig. If there's some submerged trees, whatever, but I got it on braid. So if the water's a little bit tinged, I can get away with this. Uh, another classic that I got on <clears throat> floating frog. You guys know this is a live target. Um, I like this frog. This is probably my favorite frog and it catches bass. Um, got it on 40 pound braid, high speed reel. It's a seven two heavy rod. I got this for kind of, if there's some pads, if there's some scum goo, if there's primrose, like any kind of like heavy cover top water, extra shallow. I'll even skip this joker under the docks a little bit too. This is definitely though like a, a mid to late spring deal. I wouldn't have this out if it was like 55 degrees out, but things have finally kind of war like warmed up a bit. Another classic right here, and I really like this one too because it's my design, right? I helped design it. Um, this is a Gambler Goat Swim Jig. Um, I have it in a shad color. One thing that happens in spring is you get the shad spawn, and so there's a lot of shad around. I will switch though between this and like a green pumpkin or a black and blue, but I got this thing set up with a, a little easy upside down. Um, I have it on 20 pound fluorocarbon and a seven foot medium heavy rod. Depending on where I'm fishing, where I've been fishing, the cover has been somewhat sparse, so I've been able to get away with fluorocarbon, but if I'm gonna fish like thick heavy pad stems or thick heavy like primrose, or say like if I was in Florida and Kissimmee grass and stuff, I am gonna put this on like 50 pound braid and a little bit heavier rod. But I wanted to, I'm trying to play around more with fluorocarbon on my reaction style baits to get used to it because I'm not super duper used to it. So it's kind of a, a training mechanism for me. And lastly on my, my reaction side, I actually got one other reaction lure back there, but it's just something I have, like like I said, like a just in case deal. Um, you guys have seen this a lot in the videos lately, chatterbait. Um, the water's kind of tinged, so I do have, Ryan talked about that chartreuse in white. Um, I got my little easy on there. I, I have that brighter one on there. Like I said, there's a little bit of a shad spawn and the water's a little bit tinged, but I have seen a lot of brim up shallow. We've had a weird spring. Things are kind of like late, once again, talking about like Ryan's video, things are kind of late. And ironically, there's a lot of brim and bluegill up shallow. Um, and usually when the fish are spawning, there aren't nearly as many up this shallow. So I may want to switch that up. You really gotta think about your lake and like what, what the central forages are. For me, it's gonna be always brim or shad, brim or shad, brim or shad, brim or shad. And that's kind of the same in Florida too. Um, but I think I'm gonna need to change this out to something darker. But just, I mean, whatever. You have, you know, have a chatterbait on deck, dude. If you got any kind of grass in your lake or, 
even if you don't, man, you can really fish a chatterbait in open water. It's been one of the hottest baits out there, especially for spring fishing. Moving over to my finesse stuff. This one's like obvious, dude. Like if you don't have this on your deck, you don't know how to fish. That was kind of mean actually, but dude, just like Senko style. This is a fat ace, but it's literally weightless. I got it on a spinning rod, seven foot medium. Um, I have it braid, it's 12 pound test braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader, a little bit light, but I do believe that that lighter line, especially on lakes like Gunnersville that are super duper pressured, makes a big difference. And then I'm not afraid to get it out if I have super clear water. What am I gonna do with this? I will pitch this thing to coals in the grass. I will skip it under docks. I will, I'll do anything with it, dude. I hate fishing it. <laughs> like I'll be flat out honest with you I hate fishing a weightless like worm when I was a kid I caught so many fish and so many big fish on this thing that I don't know what's wrong with me and I shouldn't hate to fish it but frankly I like to do more like reaction style stuff and if I'm throwing like a super finesse worm the way I like to do it and you guys are gonna see like some pretty epic videos of this coming up that I'm working on editing but um this this is really my go-to dude and that's that's like a super light net this is that Nichols Clint Davis I think it's 316 or something like that but it's it's the lighter version version and um, I have a stinger on there or I'll put like a cutoff ace on there but I like doing with this everything I do with that weightless like Senko style fat ace I'll skip it under docks I'll throw it to like little holes in the grass and stuff like that it's surprisingly weedless it does get hung up a little bit the biggest trick with this though is I have this this is one of the oldest rods I have this is a Shimano Compre dude I have this I've had this for like 12 years 10 years it is let me get the tip over here. It is a super soft rod, but it's an extra fast tip. It's got a little bit of backbone, but it's a super soft rod because oftentimes when they eat this thing, you never feel them bite it and the rod just loads up. So you need a super soft rod, but it is hyper finesse fishing. Like if you hook a five pounder around grass, it's gonna be a dance, dude. But I will always have this thing on deck in spring and you're gonna see why in some of the videos coming up because it catches them when nothing else will and i've really learned to do a lot with it don't think this is just something that you cast and drag like it doesn't work that way i can do a million things with this from skipping docks to pitching to pitching holes to bed fishing a lot of things i can do with this so the other thing i got right over here and this is pretty classic too um if you're out in spring and you got one rod to bring out with you put a Texas rig on it. This is just a quarter ounce Texas rig, little six cents bullet or a bobber stopper right there. Um, once again, that, that four rod offset shank hook owner. Um, I have, I actually caught a few fish on this thing today. Um, this is a banked run. It actually won the Bassmaster Classic way back in, I think in 1999 for Davy Height. Um, it's a creature style bait, kind of like a, a hog style bait, got a little tail on it. I was fishing a little bit stained water. So I wanted something that would kick. But really, you put an ace on here, a little beaver bait, just about anything, and you drag it around in those shallow, like staging and spawning areas. You can't go wrong. I like running on 15 pound test, and I also have it, this is a seven foot three medium heavy rod. I like a little bit longer rod um, to do it. It allows me to cast a little bit longer. Um, it, it, it has a little more sensitive tip because there's a little more play in the tip, which I like. A lot of times this time of year, fish will hold on to stuff. Like if they really are biting, you'll feel them tick and, and like eat it. But a lot of times they're gonna hold on to it. So that little bit of extra tip kind of lets you feel that rod load up. The other thing too, that I, the reason that I like a little bit longer rod, I'll pitch this to beds. So I can, you know, with that quarter ounce, it gives me a little bit more control to actually pitch or pitch it around docks. Or if there's some isolated target, I can be pretty accurate with a 7.3, but it's also good for pitching. That seven foot flat is a little bit short. Uh, like a seven foot medium heavy is a little short for being accurate, especially when you're trying to make longer pitches like to sight fish or something like that. So that's one thing I have on deck. I actually cut something off and I want to grab it and show it to you because it's a pretty cool rig, and a big shout out to my buddy Waltz. He's actually the president of Halo. He's freaking, he's a stick on Gunnersville, and he showed me this. Um, this is what I had tied on for quite a bit of the day, but I tried fishing some offshore structure with a half ounce football jig. Something that you might want to have on. We're in the, like, literally, dude, it is spring times a thousand. Everything's been delayed, so it's super duper spring. So we really don't have too many fish trailing in the sense of they're not like a little bit deeper, eight, nine foot. They're not kind of in a slightly winter mode. They're pretty much all up and cruising around pretty shallow. But I did see some stuff like a little bit of a hump. 
So if, if you still have early fish, put like a half ounce football jig on it, like a structure style jig. You can fish a rock pile, you can fish a tree like that's submerged, a brush pile, a little shell bar, any kind of little offshore like holding staging area, pre-spawn area. But what I did have on, it's basically, this is an owner version. It's a quarter ounce head. And as you can see, it's a wobble head. I got a Gambler Burner Craw. Um, this is Ghost Gill. It's one of my favorite brim mimicking colors, especially for semi-clear water. But it's got approximately like a four out or a five out hook on. What I do with this is literally I'll put it on a seven foot medium heavy. Depending on the cover, I'll have 15 pound fluorocarbon or 20 pound. I'll just make long cast through the grass, um, around like pad stems, around like gravel and stuff. And basically you're slow rolling it. You're almost fishing it like a swim jig. And this thing kicks. And I really believe that that wobble head just allows a little extra kind of erratic action um, on the bait. And, and it definitely triggers them more than a Texas rig. You can literally go down a line, throw this thing and get five bites and go down a line and just throw and swim a Texas rig like this thing and get like one bite or maybe no bites. So, that's pretty much my setup for the front deck. Let's move to kind of my backup rods, kind of my little nuancey stuff, and we'll get on that. So we're gonna do this from the comfort of my wonderful boat seat because it's super duper comfortable. I apologize for the guy cutting the lawn across the street. I'd run across the street and yell at him, but he's really nice, so why would I do that, right? So here's what I got down here. I got some kind of fun stuff, if I can get it untangled. So Lucky Craft Gunfish, you guys have seen this a lot in the videos. Uh, 30 pound braid, um, a little Shimano SLX. It's a 7.2, I think, Shimano Zodius. Basically, what I have though is I have a clip on there. So I love throwing this Lucky Craft, and especially for the early shad spawn when the shad are real teeny, teeny, teeny. This thing is a perfect mimicker of it, and I can do a lot of stuff with it. I can walk it, I can dead stick it, as you guys saw in the videos, tons of stuff. But with that clip on there, if I start seeing some bigger shad, or if I start seeing things blowing up like different, like if I want to put on a whopper plopper, say I'm fishing for spots, you know, I can easily swap that out and I got my top water all ready to go. And like I said, always have a top water ready to go in spring. Sometimes you get just like little micro schools of fish that start schooling on top, running bait. Um, sometimes too, which is kind of crazy, but the best way to catch some spawning fish like that are on beds is using a top water. Like it's really weird, but you put it over their bed and you like dead stick it over their bed and maybe twitch it once or twice and they will annihilate it. That's why I got that frog tied up. It's the same deal for like super shallow, like heavy cover deals. I can put that out there, walk it and let it sit over the bed. Even if I don't see the bed and they'll blast it. So what else do we got down here? Uh, I mean, this is fun stuff. So I don't have my other one on. This is a shizzard. Uh, it's a glide bait. I got this on a 795 Dobbins Fury Extreme. 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon, I can't remember which. I got this guy and then the other one that I got is a super duper realistic um, glide bait. It's like crazy realistic. I'll show it to you at the end of the video real quick. Or, you know, let me grab it out quick. So this is it. It is the coolest thing. I've showed you this thing in the videos before. My buddy, his Instagram is I think RW Holman. But dude, it is an epically sick glide bait, like super, duper realistic like crazy but i'll put that on there too this is actually a line through um glide bait uh the other one's just a nose tie but basically the reason i have those on is twofold gunnersville gets beat up and i watched my buddy kobe pillarito last year literally catch a six pounder off one of the most community holes i've ever seen using a glide bait and ever since then, when these fish are up staging or when they're actually on beds, I will have that glide bait tied on. Don't get a lot of bites on it, but I can pick that up on a place where I know there's fish and trigger bigger fish. Like they, they just eat it because it's something they haven't seen. And it has that crazy undulating action that I, I don't know, it just draws them out. The other cool thing that happens too is they'll follow the bait. If you got a bunch of staging fish, they'll follow it and let you know like, hey, there's all these fish cruising this bank, and then you pick up a worm or pick up like something a little more finesse and actually trigger them to bite using that. So the other things I got on, and I would be remiss if I did not have this. This is a Hog Tech one and a half, Gambler Burner Craw, seven foot, uh, what is it, 711 heavy Halo TI, it's 80 pound braid, high speed reel. I wonder what that's for. <laughs> punching mats because I love the punch mats. And even though it doesn't work 
this time of year as well as it does in Florida. Um, it's something that if I see an opportunity, I'm gonna take it. Like today I actually caught like a three and a half, four pounder on some random kind of blown in junk. I saw a bunch of bluegill like scoot out of this mat, this gunk mat, and I'm like, hell dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna dive on in, I'm gonna flip on in there. So I flip my bait on in there and and donk and caught a three and a half, four pounder. And never caught another fish doing it, but I always have it tied on because a lot of times with that kind of stuff, it's a singular opportunity. I want the rod right here so I can grab it, quick make a pitch. If it happens like it did today, awesome, catch a fish. If not, put the rod back here and no harm no foul. The last thing I got tied on is a crankbait. This is kind of like my, my topwater setup though. This is a 7.3 Halo. Um, it's a little stiffer rod than a standard cranking rod. Um, I use this this time of year because the grass is coming up and oftentimes I'll rip a square bill. Uh, a square bill like through the grass, like slightly submerged grass, kind of maybe staging fish, three to five foot, three to six foot. But what, why I say this is like the, the top water is I have a clip on there. Um, this is actually a Lucky Craft BDS, one of my favorite grass fishing crankbaits. You, probably, you guys are gonna see it in um, my Ryan Salzman video with me when we went out fishing. But that clip allows me, so say for instance, like, I don't know, we get a front or something like that. Water gets cold. I don't want something as, as bulky as that, that Lucky Craft BDS. Say I wanna go back to like a DT6, classic, you know, winter or like, spawn or not spawn but like frontal bait you know so i can literally just go in my box grab out that dt6 clip it on there and i'm ready to rock and roll like super quick super efficient so that's about the rods that i got i got one more thing to show you i do keep a stash of rods i got so many rods in my in my little rod locker so i got like a little underspin on that's a shallow running underspin right there on a six foot ten um i think i have yeah you always have like you know jerk bait that's a, a mega bass um what is it, vision 110 uh, i got a little fluke tied on right there i got some crank baits i have another line through soft plastic swimmer so basically uh, i i just try to keep like a million I don't know, a million approaches to like the water column, three to six foot, or I'm sorry, one to six foot. Basically, I know I'm gonna be catching them shallow. It's just a question of, of like what kind of catching. Is it like a horizontal retrieve? Is it a reaction style bait? Do I have to go more finesse? Do I have to skip a dock? That's kind of my arsenal and like that I will go out in spring with. Like literally, like if I'm going to Wilson, if I'm going to Pickwick, if I'm going to Gunnersville, even Smith Lake to an extent right now, I'm gonna use that, that same arsenal. I might modify and downsize a few things, but hell dude, I caught him on a frog on Smith and stuff like that. So like you can kind of have a general like repertoire like like just set up that you go out there in spring because you know those fish are going to be shallow and you really especially when it comes to catching bigger ones you don't have to look anywhere else that's gonna be a wrap i hope you guys enjoyed this tell me your spring fishing rigs that you have on the deck all the time anytime do i need to add something i think i need to improve my reaction style baits a little bit more so if you guys got some recommendations on I like kind of like finessier reaction style baits. So if you got something in mind, like drop it down in the comments box. I'd love to hear it, but share your perspectives. A lot of guys read the comments on these videos and, and they take stuff away. So don't give up your biggest secrets or give them up, dude, depending on how you want to play. But I'd love to know some of the things that you have on deck all the time during spring, during the spawn. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe during all this shenaz of blahs, the blah. I hope you can still fish and definitely throw a like and subscribe on the video if you enjoy this kind of content. If you wanna see anything else, like I, I don't think about the stuff that I have in my boat. I just think it's in my boat and stuff that I use. So I never think to do videos on it, but I thought today would be kind of a cool day. You know, I'll show you my rods and rigs that I have like all the time for spring. But if there's something that you wanna see, drop it down in the comments box. Thank you guys for supporting the video. Bog, you still down there? Hey, Bog, what are you doing, dude? You sleep. <laughs> it's a little warm out for Bog today, so he's tired. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.